yes, this movie is on Netflix, or at least to my former recollection, it is on. It was on Netflix because everyone, I never had Netflix, right? But I would always check, if I, if I watched a movie, I would always check if it was on Netflix so I could know and I could tell people because I everyone would be like oh is this movie on Netflix and I'd be like oh let me check or like oh I don't know no I would find out if it was a movie that I liked I would tell I would find out I would look on the internet and be like hey is this on Netflix and it would tell me whether it was or not and then I would be like I would be ready I would sit there and I'd be like oh hey watch this movie it was really good and then you'd be like oh is it on Netflix and I'd be like yes I looked it up because I knew that I messed up. Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart this movie is an animated movie and it is beautiful it is a musical movie, it was based on French, and I think the story about the whole movie in itself, like the movie s story is amazing, and the story about the movie is amazing. So, this is, this movie is based off an album, an album by the band called Dionysus, and this is a French band, right? This is, the French band Dionysus made this album, The Boy, with the clockwork heart or something or the boy with the the boy with the cuckoo clock heart and then they made a book called the boy with the cuckoo clock heart and then came the movie adaptation jack and the cuckoo clock heart so it came from an album was written into a book and then made into a movie because the guy who started it was like, I want this album to have a story, and so he wrote the book, and then the book ended up turning into a movie. So it's kind of crazy, because it's like, was the book or the, or the album so popular that they made a new movie? But anyways, this film, I, I want to say that I remember seeing it advertised to me somewhere, but I didn't. Like, when I saw it on Redbox, I recognized the cover, and I was like, I gotta watch that, right? Because I was like, this looks familiar. And my siblings said it, too. Like, they were like, this looks like I've seen it before, too. But we had seen it before ever because it like when we started watching it it looked completely foreign to us but the movie was amazing i don't normally recommend movies unless i really like them and i don't purchase movies or series unless i really like them i loved jack and the cuckoo clock heart so much so that i purchased it i have listened to the albums even so even so i listened to it in french and i also bought the book let me tell you It's animated beautifully. It's really well done. It's definitely stylized in a sense that you would know that it's French. Like if you watch Code of Lyoko, you if and you look at the head shape, it's like that, but in 3D animation. And so like even Code of Lyoko did have that 3D animation aspect where they were like in the game. It kind of looks like that. It kind of looks like that, but you know, more touched up and more refined because it's a movie. The story is amazing. The songs are catchy and they're beautiful. I literally still listen to the soundtrack like every like more than once a month like every week i probably listen to it at some point or one of the songs it's amazing so the story is um a boy is born on the coldest day on earth and so he gets a frozen heart right and so they end up his heart is frozen so it doesn't work so this witch doctor cuts it out and re makes the rest of his body work with a clock heart and so, yes, this isn't scientifically based off anything, and it wouldn't, it's, it's a fictional world, right? And so they, in the movie, they do all this beautiful imagery, they have these weird transitions, and these very unique, stylized ways of depicting things. So they have this strand that's like based off an accordion, and like it, the way it moves is different, and when it shows that like the person's in thought and feeling emotional and thinking, like loving things, like they start to float, or the things they're envisioning, like they envision, like the world around them is affected by the way that they're feeling. Like there's this part where the two main characters, they end up singing and like every, the world around them stops and everything starts floating around them and like the water starts going in reverse and a flower's like petals that had fallen on the ground come back onto the flower and it makes a whole flower again. And so like the, their, their feelings affect the atmosphere and affect them and it look it's beautiful it's beautiful and it makes you so much more immersed in knowing the characters and so the end of the story i like it's a jump great huge skip right so the guy ends up okay so the guy is born of the clock heart and he must abide by the three rules firstly never touch the hands of your heart rule number two keep your temper under control last but not least the most important rule whatever else you do never fall in love and then there's like a whole little line after that because if 
for it if you do and your heart goes into spin, the big hand at your core will pop out of your skin. Your bones will implode, your cogs and springs explode, and the hand at your heart will stop forevermore or something like that, right? Super cool. Love the rules. And of course, you know, like, as soon as you hear the third rule and you're like, never fall in love, you're like, oh, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna fall in love. Yeah, like that, yes, that happens. And so the whole thing is like keeping control of his emotions. And so he ends up getting this crush on this girl at a young age. And then he's like, oh, he ends up finding out that her outfit was from the school. And so he'd never gone to school. So he's like, hey, I'm gonna go to school. Like, please let me go to school. How am I gonna learn about applying the rules of my heart in the real world if I don't have exposure to the rules and the real world and knowing how to control myself around those situations? And so he convinces his mother to go. And so he ends up going to school. Um, the girl ended up leaving and then he ends up going like across the country to find where the girl left and they end up meeting again and she doesn't know that it's him and she is like still promised to this person that she fell in love with before she left and he feels bad and then later he comes out to find that it's her it's it's him it was him that she was in love with and then they're both in love and then the former arch enemy comes out and he's like hey he's a bad guy he ended up poking my eye out which he did but accidentally but the guy was like a bully and any and he like so totally deserved it and he told her the rules and she and she, it's crazy it's crazy because it hurts but it comes from such a loving place so the guy the bad guy tells her the rules like flat out he's like yes he's not supposed to fall in love and this and that and so she rejects him even though they had already gotten into this whole like we're gonna run away together i love you they both knew it was each other and they were like yes it's always been you i knew you reminded me of him and it's so, like it's you and we love each other but he, she ends up, as soon as she finds out the rules, she ends up rejecting him. And he was like, what, why? And she was like, oh, are you trying to make me a murderess? And he's like, he's like, oh, like, they end up arguing. And he's like, oh, gosh, I feel sick. And she's like, well, I'd rather you be sick than dead. And so, like, the whole, the whole reason that she does reject him is because she doesn't want him to die because of him and her loving her and them being together. She doesn't want to inadvertently kill him by giving him the affection that they both want to give each other. So like they both do love each other and it's wholesome and it's like wholeheartedly kind. And so she ends up leaving with the bad guy back to um, the, the city they were born in and the guy stays there at the circus, like the Kukula Cart Jack. And he's angry, like being rejected and knowing that the clock is his limitation, he rips it out, he um, kinda dies, and then, well, he passes out. He's like weak, you know, like he ripped out his heart. He's like bleeding out, basically. But they can't show blood. And so his friend, who he'd met along the way, helps him re, he's like, oh, I'll help you remake it, or whatever. And he's like, oh no, I don't want you to remake it. I want a, I want a real heart. And so he was, he has a key that he gave the girl because it was symbolic and it's like, here's the key to my heart, the clockwork key that winds him up every day. It was this whole huge romantic gesture. And so she's already leaving. She's leaving the freaking city. And he doesn't have the key. She has it. And so he, she's already left. The guy's like, what? You gave, you gave your, the key to your heart to the first girl you met. Like, are you crazy? Go find her. And so he's like, oh no, she already left. And he's like, oh no. Well, okay, we'll get you to Madeline, his mother, who made him the cuckoo clock heart. And come to find out, his mother passed away in the prison cell. And so it comes, it cuts to the scene where the girl is talking to the bully. And she was like, oh no, I have to give him his heart back. Or no, his key back. And he's like... Oh no, he says something about Madeline. He tells her that she died because he was like, oh, she's, he's probably going to go back to Madeline and she, they're just going to live there. And he's like, I wish that were true, but Madeline's dead. She died in the prison cell. And it's not. And she's like, oh no, I have to give him his heart back. And so he, uh, by this time, she's running out and they're like, this is carriage times. So they were riding on the carriage. So she ends up running back to this place and Jack is already on the, on the bus to Edinburgh back to Madeline's house. But he doesn't know she's dead yet. And so she ends up getting back to the circus. She talks to the friend, and then he is like, "Oh no, Jack's already left. Here, um, go go find him." And she was like, "Oh, well, like he was like, oh, it's, it, don't worry though. Madeline's gonna fix him." And she's like, "No, Madeline's dead." And he's like, "What? You have to go like help him, save him right now." 
It's like the one thing he wants is for you to help him. And so he gives him he gives her his journal that he was writing in ever since he met the guy and he was just so nice and he was like, Oh, I've never met someone dream about another person with such intensity as little Jack does. And so, you know, he went across the country for her and he was inspiring and this and that. And so she she ends up missing the train just by a little bit, so she has to wait for the next train to go into the next city with him and at the very end, she ends up making it. He's he goes home. There's a scene there's like the whole scene where he gets home and he finds out that she's dead and then he's like already sad. He goes out to the grave, it's snowing, and then um Miss Acacia, the main love interest, comes up, she finds him, he's he's standing by the tree with the grave like the cross at the grave. And she was like, Oh, like I found you, I found you just in time. Here, just I'll I'll turn your key and you'll be fine and all this and then, you know, like you'll be alive. That that basically. And she was like, I'll just turn your heart and you'll be fine. And he was like, You coming back for me was the biggest turn you could give my heart. And it's sweet and nice. And so she's gonna go do it and he takes the key and he just chucks it out, right? He chucks it over the hill. It's snowing, so it's just gonna get lost in the snow. It's this tiny key. And she was like, No, like why would you why? I could have helped you. And he was like, Well now I'll just I'll be responsible for whatever I do, right? So now you can kiss me. And he kisses her, and his heart starts, like, beating, because it was, like, it was cold outside, and it was already dying, so it was, like, being really slow and stagnant. And so they kiss, and it starts spinning and spinning, and it pans around them, and there's this song, I like, that you can feel the love, and you feel it hype, and you feel, like, the emotion that comes from, like, them finally kissing for the first time. It's panning around them, it's snowing, it's beautiful, he's holding her face, and then he pulls away... And she's still, she's still in that position. She's still in that kissing position. And you notice that the snowflake stopped. And you're like, wow, it's like one of those scenes where like the world stops but because of how happy he is. And then he just pulls away. She's still like that. He looks up and there's like this warm glow in the sky. And he just starts climbing up the snowflakes. And he looks back and smiles. And then he just keeps going. And he just died. And he died. Died and oh my gosh, I cried, I bawled when I saw that movie. My sister did too, we bawled. And then I was showing one of my friends this movie and he, I cried again and he was like, oh, you're crying? And I'm like, yes, I'm crying, this is sad. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. And so again, I got inspired to read the book and the book was different. I ended up reading comments about the last, like I looked up the last song and like just to be like, and just to find out if like it did mean that he died. It did, he died. But I looked up and people were like, oh, the book ending is different, but it's sadder. And I'm like, sadder than him dying? What? So I get, I got the book because I was invested in this movie. It's amazing. It's a great movie. So I bought it in, on Blu-ray. I have it on Blu-ray. And then I ended up reading the book and the ending was different. So many things were different. And since this was a movie, there were some things that they didn't say, or some things that you were supposed to expect. And I guess mo most people would already have expectations, given like reading the book or knowing the album. But since this was set in Fran France, things are different. And so, apparently, the person, his original, like his birth mother, was a prostitute and she was pregnant with him. And so, she... The Madeline, the do the mother he has now, was basically just a doctor who would perform surgeries and give birth, or, or perform abortions, for prostitutes. Basically, like she was kind of witch doctor because she would basically do what people didn't want to do normally, and that was already a turn. And then the worst freaking turn, and and the book was Madeline, the the cuckoo clock heart. Didn't matter. He did, like the, the part where he ripped it out and he passes out. Up in the normal in the in the book, he wakes up like two years later and he he does have a new clock heart because that's what he said or that's what they said that he should do. But they ended up telling him that his mother Madeline, the witch doctor, whatever, basically used that as a control because she was never able to give birth. She didn't have her own biological kids, and so keeping Jack was her chance of being a mother. And so she ended up having the whole clock heart thing. Like they could have removed it by the time he was two, I think they said. But they ended up keeping it. She ended up keeping it on him to have him need her, basically. 
So like it's kind of like a whole like trapping the kid into needing you. And so like it was like I don't know if she would have ever expected to grow up for him to grow up and for her to know that he would have to leave the nest. But I guess so she used the clock heart thing to keep him tied to her so that he would always need her. And so that was already crazy because it's like basically like a psychological experiment on the kid with the clock heart. Like that's crazy. And then worse off, so he's in a coma for two years. He isn't shaved. He ends up meeting uh, Miss Acacia again, the love interest. And they talk and they kind of flirt. And at this point, she's married to the bully because it's like two years later. And they talk for a while. And then she says that she's going to leave a, a bit. Like they were flirty kind of. And like they both knew it was kind of flirty. And then she's like, oh, you know, you just stop. Like I'm married. And then she says, I'm married to someone that I don't love. And she's talking about like the bully. And then she also says that like, um, the person that I love died a long time ago. And he was like, oh, okay. And then so she says, she ends up saying that she's going to be leaving sometime. Like he's like, oh, let's meet again next week or something. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to be leaving actually. And so he, he makes it his goal to shave, look normal again, look back to his old self. And he was going to give her the clock heart that he ripped out, the clock face, so that she would know it was him, that he didn't die. And so she ends up, he, he ends up meeting her again. He has the clock heart and he's like, oh, let me give you this before you go. And she's like, no, I don't think we, that's a good thing to do. We shouldn't do that. And he's like, no, really, I think you need to see it. I think it'll change your mind about some things. And so she accepts it. She opens the, she opens it and sees the clock face and she's like, Every day, I visited his grave, even this morning, and left flowers, but not anymore, because as far as I'm concerned, you don't exist. And I was like, it's, it blew my mind, because she found out it was him, that he was alive, and she loved him, and he loved her, but she still rejected him. And I thought that was crazy, but... I also thought it was the most mature ending that could have happened because she did get put through a lot. She did get put through, you know, being like, oh, I'm accidentally going to kill you. And, oh, you died two years ago. Like, maybe she hadn't moved on and she did still love him. But it's also like, it's two years later now. Like, yes, I loved you and you died. But, like, I was, even though I still loved you, I was convinced you were dead. And that does have a different feeling than knowing they're still alive. And having that expectation that you'll see them again and be with them again. And it even past that was just the fact that it was kind of justified that she could do that. Like if you were hurt enough by a person, even if you do love them, you can leave them. And some people will. And so I thought that was crazy mature, even though it was, it was sadder because he didn't die, I guess. Because in, in the movie, when he died... It was still nice because they both got the happy ending, kind of. I mean, he died, so it's bad. But you don't get to see anything that happens after he dies. You just know that he kissed her, kissed her and that things ended up happy. You know, he ended up happy. He died. They kissed. It was beautiful. But in the book, like, it says that he never, like, remarries. He never sees, seeks anyone else, and then he dies at some point. Like, it says that, like, years later, he dies, and then his skull is kept by this person and this and that. So, like, it's... It's worse because you know that he did, they did find each other again and that they could have loved each other and that his heart would have worked and they could have had a happy future together. But she was done, I guess. And it hurt, it hurt in a whole other way. But it was reasonable. It made sense. It was a, it m made sense that that would be how the story would end kind of. Because, I mean, not everything is a happy ending. This, this was probably one of the more realistic endings to a book. And so, I don't know. I definitely think, I think you need, I think if you haven't seen it, I recommend it to everyone. Like, as soon as anyone on Facebook is like, oh, do you guys have Netflix recommendations? I'm like, watch Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so good. I had one of my friends watch it. He's obsessed. Everyone who I've had watch it with me loved it. Everyone thinks it was great. The music slaps. It's a bop. It's great. The music is good. The animation is amazing. It's a great story. I definitely think you should give it a watch. But I think that's it for now. This is probably a really long video, but I hope you watch it through. 
um, subscribe. I don't know. I feel like I'm t t turning into a, like a freaking movie review channel, but I mean, I don't mind. I would love to find other people who watch things that I do, and I would love to be recommended movies and shows or books by people who show that they have the same interests as me. So, I don't know. I definitely think you should give this a look. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Bye for now. Give it a chance. Even just listen to the songs first if you want to get the songs first before you watch it to see if that catches your interest. I don't know. Look at the trailer. Or just take my word for it and watch it. Either way, I don't, I really don't expect you to be dissatisfied with it. If you are a person who likes things like I do, I guess. Like showmanship, animation, music, a good story, artistry. If you like those things, I think you'll like it.